Hello, this is going to be part two of my series determining when a time lapse was taken. And what I also want to do is to see if I can determine where it was taken as well. One of the things that I noticed when I was looking at the video in question, the footage in question starts from 726 to around eight minutes. One of the main things that I noticed with this video was that the speed of the time lapse is not consistent. It starts off fairly slow, and then when the moon appears, it's going to come down, and when the moon is right around here, you'll see that the moon speeds up, and all of the stars continue to accelerate, and then they seem to decelerate. I'm going to play that part again here so that you can see what's going on. Please pay close attention to the speed of the sun, the moon, and the stars. When I left off on part one, I had narrowed it down very quickly to within a day or so. And I wasn't sure at that point if the moon was closer to the sun or whether it was closer to Aldebaran. And given the fact that the sun changes its relative position to the stars a lot more slowly than the moon changes its position to the stars, it would be far easier and far more accurate to determine the day and even the time of day by looking at the position of the moon. And so that is the approach that I had taken. I had already narrowed it down very quickly to within a couple of days simply by looking at the position of the sun relative to the stars, but I was really more focused on trying to determine as close to the hour or even the minute. And also the corollary to that would be where on earth this time lapse was taken. And so that was the approach that I had taken from the very beginning. So just to review, there are a couple of challenges associated with that. The first is that the sun disappears. Then 6.24 seconds later, the moon first becomes visible. So there is a total of 6.24 seconds where there's absolutely nothing going on, no frame of reference in terms of time elapsed. So there's the six seconds or thereabouts, and then the moon shows up, and then when the moon is right around here somewhere, the frame rate starts to increase rapidly, then it starts to decrease a little bit again, and then the end of the, of the time lapse. So what I did today was to work out what I think would be the best way to calculate the distance between the sun and Aldebaran versus the sun and the moon. The first thing I did was I got a copy of the YouTube video that the metadata and that video was rendered at 25 frames a second. I exported the frames from 7 minutes and 25 seconds to 8 minutes minutes into the video. Each frame is sequentially numbered. So frame 290 in this case is the first frame where I can just barely see the moon. Somewhere where the moon was about two-thirds of the way towards setting was frame 590. So I'm looking at the difference between here and here. I also went and found the frame 543 where the moon is just peeking over the edge of the horizon and for, for reference there's the previous frame and there's the moon just before it disappears. I also measured the number of pixels between the first and mid frame which was 290 and that would be simply going to 590, locating the moon, taking the measurement, and so I went from about here to about there, and I got 289.3, so I put 290 there. The average pixels per frame is simply the number of pixels, which was 290, divided by the difference between these two. I multiplied by my video frame rate to give me pixels per second. At this point, we're going to move over to this column because I made some other calculations that kind of go in between these two. And so the next thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to calculate what the field of view was and to correlate it to a number of degrees across 
across the sky. So I ended up using one of the last frames that I had and I measured, I know that this is Aldebaran and this is a group of two stars as opposed to one and just to make it a little bit easier I ended up using this one instead which gave me 336 pixels. I put down 334 in this case and then I went in my star database and I got the right ascension and declination for each of these stars. I subtracted the one right ascension from the other and I subtracted the declination of one from the other. The degree delta is basically the formula c squared equals a squared plus b squared and I got a degree delta of 14.294. From there I could work out the pixels per degree and also the number of pixels per hour. The main problem is that I have 6.24 seconds where I can't account for anything and I'll get to that analysis in a minute but at this point I wanted to finish my calculations before I tackled the the frame rate or the speed of the time lapse issue so the next thing that I did was I worked out the last frame where I saw the Sun appear which was frame 134 and so there you can barely see where the Sun was and unfortunately you can't see the moon in in this photo I needed to find out where this where the moon appeared between this frame which is the last frame that I could see the Sun and this frame where the moon appeared so here what I did was I drew a spline curve that intersects all of the points where I saw the moon and then I extended it up past the first point where the moon showed up which is right there so I extended it past that point and working backwards I got 150.8 pixels so knowing that I had 6.24 seconds of time lapse if I subtract the Sun's last visible frame from the moon's first visible frame I arrived at 156 frames I ended up using 156 multiplied by 0.9 666 which gave me 150.8 pixels so taking advantage of layers in GIMP I loaded the first image where the moon appeared and then I added a separate layer and I just drew a little white dot where the moon appeared in that first frame then I could hide the moon picture using this dot as a frame of reference I was able to transfer that dot onto a copy of this one then I overlaid this spline curve line again then measuring 150 pixels up again Again, from this point I was able to make another mark up here in essence I was able to estimate where the moon should have been in this particular frame which would have been up here and then for the 6.24 seconds that there was nothing visible the moon slowly descended to the point it got dark enough that it was just becoming visible here finally the last thing that I was able to do was working backwards I started with one of the last frames that I had available here and I stacked the images lining everything up as best as I could and here you can see the moon and then finally I was able to show where the Sun was here's the last image where the Sun is just about to go below the horizon this dot represents where the moon is just visible here this dot is where the moon would have been up here I had to take some small artistic license trying to figure out what the angles between these two would have been with only a single reference point namely tying the moon in this image to the moon in this image and tying the moon in this image to the moon in this image I was able to be a lot more accurate with these two by lining it up against these stars here and here you can see that it looks like atmospheric condition is causing a bit of a visual distortion and not all the stars seem to be lining up the same if you do watch the original video 
it looks like the camera stayed in the same spot because everything that's on the ground appears to stay in the same spot. So at this point, I had a single stacked set of images that I could take measurements. And at that point, it was easy enough to measure the distance between the moon and Aldebaran, 938, and between the moon and the sun, 587. So here I ended up with 590 and 940. I worked these numbers out as well, which would be useful if I could add that kind of functionality in my app so that I could have it compute the instantaneous angle difference between two objects. But I decided today to simplify things. I approached it from a slightly different angle. I wanted to calculate how far the moon was to Aldebaran from the sun. And so the way I did that was I added these two pixel distances. It's more or less in a straight line. So any errors in a slight angle are not going to be that great. I divide the distance of the moon to the sunset by the sum of these two. And I did the other one as well, which is the which is the distance between the moon and Aldebaran by the total here. Then I went back to my app and I chose a zoom level that was reasonably close where I could see the sun, the moon, and Aldebaran. And I just got my measuring tape and that came out to 210 millimeters on the screen. So 38% of that distance should be 80 0.9 millimeters and the distance between the moon to Aldebaran should be 129 millimeters. And if I started off with my current longitude, there's my 210 millimeters between Aldebaran and the sun. But when I measure the distance between the moon and the sun, I got 95 millimeters. So I knew that the moon was too far up this way. And what I had to do is I had to go back in time. I knew that it was around sunset, so I had to go east. And I kept going. I figured the next point would be somewhere probably maybe around the UK. Go back in time. And you can look at these numbers here to get a feel for the time involved. And now I still get 90 millimeters. So I have to go east even further. So. If my position was 95, this is 90, I'd have to go probably somewhere around maybe 75 degrees east. And here the distance between the moon and the sun was 81 and a half degrees. If I back up a little bit more, this is where things get a little bit interesting because I had estimated where the moon was supposed to have been from the six seconds of video frame with nothing. And at some point, I had worked out that each second of video is 256 seconds in real time and that works out to almost 30 minutes. So one of the problems is the fact that this thing is drifting without any frame of reference. The last frame that I saw is just as it has gone over the horizon and there is atmospheric refraction that has to be taken into account that I was not taking into account. So that's going to add a few extra minutes involved. And with all of this, I don't think that I am quite able to narrow it down with my app in particular because the equations that I'm using for the moon and for the sun do have minor inaccuracies in them and I made a video already that explains all of the details. So as of today's video I am fairly certain that this was taken in Europe. I estimated a latitude of about 60 degrees because I measured the slope of the moon's descent which is 30 degrees from this point but you have to look at the zenith angle to be able to determine your latitude which would be 90 minus 30 would be 60 degrees. And based on this, they were either in Russia somewhere or in one of the Scandinavian countries 
countries like maybe Norway and the reason why I'm not narrowing it down to Norway may be related to the errors introduced by the atmospheric refraction and by the algorithm that I'm using to calculate the moon's position. At this point I am fairly certain though that it was on March 26th of 2020. That's going to be it for this part. Thank you for watching and I would appreciate the thumbs up that quite possibly YouTube keeps removing for some reason. So I will see you again in another video soon enough. So bye for now.